Hey. Oh, hi. <laughs> How's it going? Why you got this old professional background? Why do you have this professional hair? Okay, I look like <laughs> this every day, bitch. <laughs> mirror, mirror on the wall, don't say it cause I know I'm cute. Ooh, baby. Knew it down to my drawers, LV all on my shoes. Ooh, baby. I be dripping so much sauce, got a bit looking like bread goo. Ooh, Lit up like a crystal ball, that's cool, baby, so is you. <clears throat> Hello, Snowden, so let's go in part state of mind. Yeah, yeah, I'm up in Brooklyn, now I'm down in Tribeca, right next to the Nero, but I'll be hood forever. My story begins in Houston, Texas. I was a flute player and went to college for music performance. I was really excited about writing. I would write uh, rap. It's that L to the I to the Z Z O. Ain't got no time for the C three P O. Look at, look at here. Three cheers for the woman of the year, me. When did Lizzo Lizzo sort of crystallize? I wrote a song called My Skin. I woke up in this. I woke up in this. In my skin. And people were just so shocked that, you know, in 2014, this big black girl was saying, I'm in love with myself. I love my skin. I was like, why is it such a shocker to y'all? I'm going to just talk about this shit all the time until you get used to it. Tell me about meeting Lizzo and what was your first impression of her? Honestly, my first impression was, yo, this big girl don't give a f bro. She <laughs> hard. She hard, bro. Bitch! I was just drawn to her, you know, her, I don't know what the word is. Do you remember what the studio was like on the day you guys started Juice? We had made a lot of demos. We had made a lot of songs. And um, I was getting a little tired. I remember she was like, Ricky, I want you to play a song that is an undeniable hit. And he was like, all right, I think this is it. We were like, and it was just the guitar. It was the bum, bum, with the drums. Bum, 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 bum. I was so specifically trying to like find the Prince, Bowie, et cetera, like thing. It made me want to dance. It made me feel like, yo, this has a throwback feel, but they definitely made it in 2019. The way he works is he'll just kind of sit there for a while. I'm just sitting in a chair laid back and the mic is like literally right here. And I said, mirror, mirror on the wall, don't think I know I'm cute, ooh, baby. I thought that was really cute and cool, but I was like, you know, keep going. I said, I woke up like this, ain't even got to try it. She was like, she was like, man, somebody said that already. I woke up like this. It's not just about waking up pretty. What do we really mean underneath that? I was born like this. And I was like, that's even better. I was born like this means... I love me at, for me, no matter what makeup I have on, what weave I have on, whether I got my lash extensions on or not. I was like, I think we need a word. What's the word? The word that, you know, we was like, yo, juice. I think juice is kind of freaky. I think juice is um, kind of uh, spiritual and special. I think um, I think it's black. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we recorded the demo, and then when we started working on it with Lizzo, I always work on the key with the artist to get the sweet spot vocally. She went straight in the boot and started recording it, and as soon as I heard her sing, Mirror, mirror on the wall, don't say it, because I know I'm cute. I was like, oh, we out of here. This artist, <laughs> this is hard <laughs> as Sometimes when I'm in a session and an artist sings one line, I can't help but jump on the talk back and be like, this is going to be crazy. I like shot and naked better over time. Can you just say I'm not the baddest bitch you like? <laughs> I laugh in the track and I laugh live. I just think that's funny. I'll be like, bitch, you're lying. <laughs> Ain't my fault that I'm out here getting I texted Ricky, like, after I was done recording, I just texted him emotional, because it was. The song was really, really simple before, and, and Ricky uh, spent a lot of time um, being a muso on it and uh, beefed it up. So this is sort of the control room. 
Here's some toys. Most of the synthesizers are early 70s, early 80s. We have basically two horn parts. I will say I'm a very horny artist. <laughs> As it went on, there's like some real kind of like 80s electro. Da, 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 da. You have this kind of magic thing that happens. It's almost like... 2019 like vintage <laughs> vintage sounds which is just like pitch shifting something to death and then it sounds like warbly and up oh i totally forgot one of the most important keyboard parts that lizzo actually came up with tell me about the decision to get lizzo's friends to come in and record back up oh man that was amazing i think I think the first person that threw that up was Tehran. We needed some gang vocals, you know? I wanted like a group of girls in there. And I was like, even better, I can get my girls in here. I was like, hell yeah, that's what I need. So like three or four of her best friends came to the studio and they were just in the booth like lit. This was a case where it was like, this is bananas, like how much it was adding. It's the little details like that that make a song from a good song to a magical moment. You know what it felt like? It felt like fun. I just kept saying, whatever we do, I want people to hear it, and I want people to smile. It honestly just feels so, so super joyful listening to it back. It ain't my fault. <laughs> it's not, I love this song. It's like I can't not sing the whole thing. What were your like high school bus bars like? Oh, my God. It was always, man, what's the deal? Man, I'm coming through. Coming down, chilling, banging on a screw. It's your girl, Lizzo. Ah! <laughs> <laughs>